Hi there folks, and welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, brought to you by Livewire Markets. My name's James Marley, and today we're gonna to be talking about a few stocks that are down in the dumps on their knees. We always hear that you guys like to hear about stocks before they run, so let's see if we can find a few today. Here with me today, I've got Will Mumford from Ozcap Asset Management and Tim Reardon from Black Waddle. Let's get started. Aurora, Will, I'm gonna start with you. Down the dumps, down 13% on the year. Packaging, not particularly exciting. Yeah. Buy, hold, or a sell. So it's a sell for me. It's been pretty beaten up following a recent acquisition, but there are a few longer term uh, questions there that are keeping me at, at a sell. So firstly, uh, I think it's got exposure to the decline in per capita alcohol consumption without the offsetting levers elsewhere in the liquor industry of premiumization and mix. Now, I know that the Saver Glass acquisition is exposed to spirits. Um, which have outperformed, but they have lower packaging intensity because of the higher alcohol content, and at the same time, spirits are already about a third of liquor demand in major markets, so I'm not sure how long that outperformance can last. The second point is that glass production is quite um, emissions intensive, and I think that creates risks longer term. I also worry about what pursuing an unpopular acquisition implies for the core business. And even though it's sold off, it's still on a similar multiple to Amcor, which I'd argue has uh, more scale, uh, more diversity, and doesn't have the same level of exposure to those issues. Tim, you know a stock's unloved when the crew at Alan Gray turn up on the register. They recently went substantial. They love picking up stocks that are unloved. Are you a, a buy hold or a sell on Aurora? Yeah, we're going to we're going to uh, go buy on on Aurora. Great argument from from Will. So I'll try and counter some of those points. I think that the Aussie business is a great great position, really strong, particularly in beverage cans. Uh, a lot of capital has to go into the business, but it is really quite strong returning. Um, Saver Glass in France and Mexico, look, if you'd been in the stock before, I think you'd be pretty upset. Coming to it now feels like the balance is in our favour. So the, the key risk in the short term in our mind is the destocking thematic through through liquor particularly and we're taking on some risk with the buy thesis that you know that could take a while to resolve but say on a 12 month view it looks like in a pretty pretty special place to recover from that and the the protection here at the moment is that you're on 12 times versus 16 17 usually okay so hence the buy it's why a bit of disagreement we don't mind that next doc endeavor group um, operator owner of dan murphy's and bws it's down 21% over the past 12 months. I've got a few mates doing dry months. Dry July seems to have taken over the whole year. Yeah. Buy, hold or sell on Endeavour Group? Yeah, we're a hold in terms of, you know, what can the business become, particularly in hotels. It's probably one point that we'd point to that to say, look, there's some optionality here mm -hmm. in terms of something that hasn't been done particularly well in terms of allocating capital and improving that business. That, that could take a turn for the better, particularly after uh, the board seems to have sorted out its, the, the direction it wants the business to go in yep. recently. So that's probably the key reason for the hold. Same stock for you. As I mentioned, a lot of people on a, on a health kick, you mentioned yep. declining per capita yep. consumption of alcohol. Buy, hold or sell on Endeavour Group? Well, it's actually a buy for us. And over the last six months, there's been a lot of noise around an AGM, uh, around potential gaming regulation changes, as well as the potential need for reinvestment within the pubs. And at the same time, there are some genuine ESG issues that you've got to get your head around with the company. But for me, the key is Dan Murphy's. So it's got price leadership, it's got more revenue than its next two competitors combined, and it's got double the EBIT margin of its next two competitors. So if you put Dan Murphy's on a premium multiple, then you're not paying much for the balance of the business. And after the AGM, I think I'd argue that management are very aligned and very focused on shareholder interests. There's probably some easy wins now within the pubs business. So I think you've got a defensive business on a reasonable multiple with some asymmetric upside. Okay, very good. Now our next stock is called Arcadium Lithium. We might get to you to give people a bit of an explainer on the stock because it, I had to look it up. I wasn't yeah. aware of it. Um, but maybe give us a quick intro on that one. The stock's down 38% for the year. It's on its 52 week lows but it has a market cap in excess of $9 billion. So buy, hold or sell on Arcadium. Sure, well for us it's a hold. The legacy of the merger between Galaxy, Oracobra and now Livevent, um, and it's a pretty diversified lithium player. I think the advantages are uh, lithium is pretty beaten up right now 
and that's despite a really strong uh, medium to long term growth outlook. It's also got a reasonable production growth story uh, and it's got diversity in terms of uh, lithium type and geography. But I think there are also some risks here. So the majority of the value of the business still sits in Argentina, which I think brings jurisdiction risk in terms of both political and economic uncertainty. And secondly, with brines, you have issues in terms of rainfall and weather and in terms of community water management. And ultimately, I just don't think you need to take these on, given elsewhere on the ASX, you've got um, the largest, highest grade Australian hard rock lithium in the world. Lithium's been on the nose. I came across a note, Bell Potter reckon this stock has more than 50% upside. You, does that get you bullish? Are you a buy, hold or a sell? Yeah, I'd be a buy. That sort of optionality is pretty interesting. Uh, so with the merger between Orkham and Liven comes uh, quite substantial synergy opportunity. And so trying to dig into understanding what these two businesses saw to go through the, the rigmarole that it has been to put them together. The key here is the, the ability to upgrade some of the, the brine to high, grade, uh, high battery grade hydroxide. So the, the, what the advantage there is that you're basically selling um, the hydroxide into the OEMs, uh, the likes of you know, Ford and Tesla. You can do that on a, uh, a price protected long term contract effectively with floors and ceilings. So it's a much more mature phase from a lithium perspective that than we're used to here in Oz where spodumene, we sell at the market rate to the, the Chinese middleman yeah. effectively. And so that, that opportunity is quite large. It will take some time to, 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 for them to, to operationalise. But the opportunity, uh, we think it's worth waiting for, so it's a buy. Okay, very good. Now, to move from the unloved stocks to stocks where the things could be getting a bit crowded. Tim, what's a stock that's out there at the moment where you think investors have got too exuberant? Uh, Reese. So we think this one is a great business. Uh, Wilson family have done an incredible job, put it in an amazing position, particularly in Australia, uh, their plumbing and, and, and bathroom distribution business. Uh, and now looking to replicate that in the States and beginning to see some, uh, some traction there as well, uh, particularly with the last, the last result in Feb. But it feels like positioning, expectations and valuation are just too rich. Aussie business is relatively mature. Uh, US business in its infancy, but with the group on 40 times earnings, there's a lot baked into success in the US already. So that, that one's too crowded for us. Okay. Well, same question for you. What's the stock? out there that looks overloved, where there could be a bit of crowding, high expectations? Sure, well, it's actually interesting. It's a similar theme to Tim's, and my name is uh, RWC, or Reliance Worldwide. So it's a stock that we added to the portfolio in the late 2022 sell-off on a PE of about 11. And since then, we've gone on a few site visits. We've spent some time with management, and we've been really impressed. So they've added some great new products. They've made some changes to their manufacturing and they've also made some accretive acquisitions. But since then, the stock is up about 60, 70%, and that's a period where earnings have been steady. So that's really just reflected a PE re-rate to about 18 times. And a lot of that move happened following their last result, and from our perspective, the result was largely within our expectations. And so for those reasons, we've reduced the position. Okay, very good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Buy, Hold, Sell. If you did, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel, give us a like. Remember, we're adding fresh content just like this every week.